I want to give you a quick hardware overview of the NetGuardian DIN. This is a fairly interesting remote because it's among the smallest that DPS makes and unlike most of the DPS R2s that are designed to mount on a 19 or a 23 inch rack, it is actually DIN rail mountable and that can be handy if you have a cabinet with that kind of mounting. So let's take a quick look at the ports and I'll talk about what they do. First thing you'll notice when you pick up this remote is that it only has ports on the front panel. And the reason for that is the back has a spot to mount your DIN mounting cleat, and that is what engages the rail. And so the RT will sit facing you like this when it's in your cabinet. So you wouldn't want any ports on the side or on the back that you just couldn't access. It just wouldn't work. So we put everything on the front panel for that reason. So now let's walk through the ports and the buttons and the indicator lights, and I'll talk about what they do. You have a status LED up at the top on the far side, and this will blink either red or green or go solid. And there's a reference table in the user manual to tell you what each of those codes mean. So it's really just a diagnostic tool. You have a reset button if you ever need to go back to factory defaults. If you get, forget your password or something, that can be handy. But hopefully you won't need that. Then the USB port is for making a craft connection to get to a text interface. You actually don't need that anymore. In the age of IP, you can just get into the web interface, and that's the most common way probably to set up. You just go to the default IP address like any other network device set it up and then you can change the IP and then you're off and running. If you prefer though, you can get into the craft port here and set the IP that way. And there are also some unique tools in that interface like debug. So if you need to get deep with tech support or just work on a challenging network config, that USB port can be really handy. Next, we get to a D-wire port. This is for daisy chaining sensors off this box, and you can have up to 16 of them. And they're small, they're just a couple inches, and you would attach those to various parts of your site. You can monitor temperature, humidity, airflow coming out of a vent, vibration even if you just attach it to your generator. So there are a lot of different D-wire sensors, and we're trying to add more. So they're bus powered, which is very handy, meaning you don't have to externally power them like you would with most third-party sensors. So that can be a really cool tool to add on to the capacity of this device and monitor things with some different types of sensors. Then as we move down you get to your eight general purpose discrete alarm inputs and these are just contact closure inputs. You can take in a closure from your generator that says hey I'm running or maybe your radio has a high noise closure that it will latch. So you can pick up any of those contact closures here and you would just describe them in the web interface to label them all for the things you wired into these eight inputs. Then over here we have analogs and this R2 has six you can take in voltage and measure it between negative 90 and positive 90, or you can do 4 to 20 milliamps if you have a sensor that outputs that standard. So if you have a 0 to 5 volt sensor or a 4 to 20 milliamp sensor, you're covered, and you can configure these individually to monitor either one of those standards. And if you just want to wire in, say, a battery voltage at neg 48 or whatever it is, you can bring that in and track it through these analogs. So you have six that you can use there. And then the bottom half of this connector is for relays, and there are four control relays. And those are just the the opposite of a discrete input, these are discrete outputs. So you can latch a relay and wire that into anything with a button, anything with a switch. If you've got a generator where it can take in a contact closure and tell it to activate or deactivate, you can do that. You can turn on lights, backup systems, unlock a door, whatever you want to do. Control relays are very flexible to let you do that. And as we continue to move down, we get to a serial port. And this is actually for reaching through to a legacy device. So if you have something that uses serial only and isn't network enabled, you can attach it here, and then you can reach through this NetGuardian to get to that old serial device over the network. So that can be a very handy tool. You're not gonna have to drive out to the site with a laptop that has, you gotta find one that even has a serial port. You can just do that with the NetGuardian now and get that on the network. And of course, that must mean that the NetGuardian is network enabled. So here's your 10100 port for your LAN. And then finally, the power inputs. This is a plus 12 or plus 24 wide range voltage model. You'll find some RTUs that can do negative 48, some that do plus 12, plus 24, variety of different standards. And if you need to run AC, you can use a wall transformer and just convert the AC to whatever the DC voltage input requirement is for the device. So if you need a specific voltage, just contact us and let us know what you need. And there are a variety of different builds available. You'll see that it does have an A and a B feed. And unlike most Net, DPS Net Guardians, where you have a GMT fuse sticking out. These are actually internal fuses, so you just open up the case. There's a couple of screws if you need to get to the fuses and replace those at any time. One last thing about mounting. I say you can do a DIN rail mount, and that's the most common use for this. Obviously, it's called the Net Guardian DIN, so that's our intent. But we were able to offer some flexibility by having these holes here, and you would attach just a little 90 degree angle bracket on both sides, and then it would sit 
this way, you'd have access to the ports on the side up against a wall. So if you have some wall space, even if you don't have a rail that you want to use, you can just mount it that way. The footprint is a little bigger that way, but it can be a handy way to set it up. It's certainly a quick way to mount it. So if you want to learn more about DPS RTUs, this DIN specifically, or any, there are over 50 different builds that suit different needs, please go to www.dpstela.com or give us a call at 1-800-693-0351.